If you have ever watched a Deportivo La Coruña game, you'd be forgiven for wondering what on earth the number 21 was even doing. A thin, awkward figure, at first sight many of us would think we were able to become a professional footballer. The eyes of the viewers fixated on this one player who just constantly looked to be playing in slow motion. But, if by some sort of sorcery, this was only part of number 21's box of magic tricks. At the wave of a wand, this relatively underwhelming figure produced spellbinding performances time, after time, after time. Before you start writing in the comments about how I shouldn't be comparing Valoran with Zidane, watch the video until the end to find out what Zidane said about Valoran. Born in 1975 in the small coastal town in the Canary Islands, Valoran learned his trade playing on the streets of Gran Canaria. Starting out in the B-team of local giants Las Palmas, he would make the jump to the first team at the age of 20, going on to help his club win promotion to the second division. In 1997 he moved away from home for the first time, stepping up to La Liga to join fellow island club Mallorca. An impressive sole campaign in the Balearics, which brought a fifth-place league finish and runners-up spot in the Copa del Rey, prompted further interest in the midfielder. It was now time for Valeran to head to the Spanish mainland. The bright lights of Atletico Madrid the destination, admittedly not the force they are today. And during a tumultuous existence under controversial president Hesses Hill, Valeran was relegated in his second season in 2000. In response, he would move to Spain's top team, at the time neither Barcelona or Real Madrid, situated in the fishing port of A Coruña, signing for Deportivo for £7.5 million in July 2000. For Valeran the move would pay dividends. In the 13 years about to unfold with Depor, he would establish himself as a club icon. He would score in just his third game for the reigning champions, netting the opener in a 3-0 win over Racing Santander, going on to score three more times that season. It was not the stats by which Valeran was measured, however, for this was a rare breed of midfielder. Possessing such finesse that he could dictate an entire game of football, Valeran's head was always up with the ball seemingly glued to his foot as he glided around the pitch in slow motion, plotting his next pass with pinpoint precision. Known as the skinny one, owing to his lanky, slight physique, this is not something that ever caused Valeran issue in his quest for greatness. Along with Diego Tristan and Roy Mackay, Valeran forms the fantastic trio that takes La Coruña close to the heights of world football. Deportivo finished runners-up in La Liga for the next two seasons in the league, they won the Copa del Rey in Real Madrid's backyard to stop Los Blancos completing a treble in their centenary season. For two years on the spin they provided the winners of the Pichichi Trophy for the top scorer in La Liga. Diego Tristan with 21 in 2001-2002 and Roy Mackay with 29 goals in 2002-2003. With Valeran behind them, it was no coincidence. Mackay described the Canary Islander as the best player he ever played with. Against the bright light of Madrid's Galatico's project and the soap opera of Barcelona, the unheralded Super Depor produced some of the great European performances of the first half of the decade in the new century. In September 2002, Juan Carlos offered the Dutch striker three times the opportunity to score against his future Bayern Munich teammates, Valeran and his playmates then chained legendary matches, victories against Manchester United, Juventus, Bayern, PSG. The most beautiful memory, the most epic above all, remains undoubtedly that of the double confrontation against the great Milan of Ancelotti. Eaten four goals to one in San Siro, the men of Ur had a crush on the return four goals to zero the team of Maldini, Kaka and Shevchenko in a riser infusion. Valeran struggles, dribbles, passes, and scores. That evening, the Spanish milieu enters, unwittingly, into the living pantheon of the port city. One Spanish columnist was moved to state that Valeran was Spain's Zidane, only better. This, however, is another part of Valeran's story, one which the player was openly uncomfortable with. The shy child from a town of 2,500 inhabitants never left him, with the skinny one noted for his unassuming modesty and keeping his private life just that. He frequently made it known how, despite being more than happy to sign autographs or pose for photos, this superstar image made him uncomfortable. Instead, Valeran saw himself as an ordinary man, I am no more important than a bricklayer. After finishing six points behind champions Valencia, in 2004-2005 they were to end in eighth. Meanwhile, their final Champions League campaign was to end in disaster, exiting at the group stage having not scored a goal. This signaled the departure of iconic coach Javier Urreta, alongside several of the Super Depor team. Luque went to Newcastle, whilst Moro Silva and captain Fran retired. Valeran, however, remained, and in the absence of all these former icons started the season well. Two minutes from time he tore cruciate ligaments in his left knee, and over the next season and a half would play just two minutes of competitive football, with the damage relapsing three times over the following 18 months. 
Deportivo suffered in his two seasons away, with both campaigns ending in, albeit successful, relegation dogfights. It proved that the Deport Orchestra was nothing without its skinny Canarian conductor. It was a painstaking road back to fitness, with Valeron detailed to wear a different colored bib in training to warn teammates not to tackle him. Naturally this singling out embarrassed the midfielder, who made his long-awaited return in January 2008, coming on for the final 15 minutes of a 3-1 win over Valladolid. With a dead man's tendon inserted in one of his knees, it was a sight many thought they would never see again. In his first full season back, Valeron's influence was enough to lead Deportivo back up the table. The 2008-2009 campaign ended in 7th place. Foreshadowing the imminent earthquake, Valeron's entire career path was then altered by events on the pitch in 2010-2011, with Depor suffering relegation in 2011 as the end of a project that had taken the provincial club from nowhere to breaking the establishment by winning La Liga at the turn of the century. The fall had been coming. Valeron would turn 36 that summer. Faced with the challenge of a season in the Segunda Division, Plenty would have decided to call it a day. But Valoran stayed to help them gain promotion back to the top flight at the first time of asking, making more league appearances that season, 39, than in any other during his career at this point. Unfortunately, it now appeared Valoran was outstaying his welcome. An underwhelming season back saw Tapor drop down to the Segunda once again and, realizing his waning powers, the midfielder decided to leave. In another move of poetic proportions, he decided to return home for the first time in 16 years and sign a one-year contract with Las Palmas, stating how it was impossible to say no. His first season back would end in heartache as Cordoba triumphed in the dying seconds of the playoff final. A reduced role in the side for Valeron came during the following season, a campaign that saw Las Palmas bury their playoff demons with a late winner against Zaragoza. Now aged 40, the fairy tale every fan in Spain wished for came true as Valeron returned to La Liga for one final year like a rock legend performing a farewell tour. In all of the matches Valeron played that season he received a hero's welcome, universally applauded at both the Bernabeu and Camp Nou. After his final match, a 0-0 draw with Athletic, he was given a standing ovation twice and thrown into the air by his adoring teammates. The list of admirers is lengthy and distinguished with iconic Italian coach Arrigo Sacchi among those who compared him favorably with Zinedine Zidane. At his peak, teammate Vladimir Jugovic argued that he could be just as great as the Frenchman. Football would have been easier if Valeron had played with me. That's what Zidane said about Valeron. Typically, the man whose biggest prize was a Copa del Rey was rather more modest. He achieved great things in the World Cup and with Real Madrid. I did not, so we are different. But Valeron left an impression nevertheless. Manchester City's David Silva, born in the same fishing village in Gran Canaria, used to collect stickers of Valeron and still wears the number 21 shirt in honor of his hero. He may not have possessed all of the traits nor the medals and accolades of the great Frenchman, but few could argue that Valeron didn't possess the same artistry. Now, I want to know what do you think down in the comments. And also, if you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe below.